going to start off seated and we're just going to I'm going to do a little bit of breath first just um, probably because I needed more myself than anything else so just get comfortable seated um, I have a block underneath me but you can have a pillow um, anything that's comfortable at all you can have the legs out in front you can sit up against the wall whatever keeps you nice and upright so all I want you to do is sit nice and upright um, kind of think about the way the line is all the way along your spine up through your neck and your head so you don't want to have your head leaning back or forward um, you just want to be nice and upright okay so then closing down the eyes and you're going to take a nice big inhale through the nose and just count to four while you do it and then exhale for four again inhaling again counting to four in your head and exhale counting the same if you feel like you can push it for five if that's a more comfortable number to count to when you breathe then do that or even a, a bigger or smaller number than that that's fine too just make sure that you're matching the inhale count with the exhale count. Okay, and one more breath. And slowly opening the eyes. Okay, so breath work like that is obviously good for calming down the system, but it's also quite good to just practice um, your breath for swimming so it's something that we would often do if we're swimming in the pool where you might do your usual breathe every three strokes and then for some sets you might do breathe every four breathe every five and that's all working on your lung capacity so if you um well we can't go to the pool and do that sort of stuff you could practice each morning sitting so if you're starting breathing in for four and out for four you could progress that on to breathing in for five and out for five and working your way up and you're building your lung capacity through as you're doing that and it's also a nice um just a nice thing to do to collect your thoughts and to bring yourself back down if you're feeling a little bit of anxiety okay so from the same position that we're in now we'll just reach the hands up over the head a nice big reach up and on the exhale you're going to bring one forward one back and you're going to twist the spine so the front arm is going to be on the outside of the knee and the back arm will just be on the ground behind inhale reaching the head all the way up and exhale twisting and looking behind another breath inhale reaching up and exhale looking behind over the shoulder and now two more breaths exactly like we did when we were sitting down at the start so just counting in for four or five whatever you were doing so two breaths at your pace inhale and exhale just stay in the same position counting the same number on the exhale as you did on the inhale and coming back around to center you can roll out the shoulders the same thing now again on the other side so inhale reaching the arms up 
and exhale you're opening the arms and one goes back one goes forward the front one comes on the outside of the knee the back one just reaches onto the ground behind so the first three inhales you're reaching up and you're exhaling twisting further around one more inhale up and exhale reaching around and then two breaths at your own pace just holding the posture that you're in so nice relaxed deliberate breaths And coming back around to center and rolling the shoulders okay so holding that nice upright position you can pull the shoulder blades in together the head is looking just out to your front not looking down not looking up just out to your front and we're just going to bring the chin down to your chest and rolling over to one shoulder and then coming back through the chest and rolling to the other shoulder we're going to do this four more times Just going at your own pace, making sure that the shoulders don't come up to meet your ears. And just going to the point of a stretch, not to the point where you feel discomfort or lightheaded. And coming back to center and bringing the head back to upright you're gonna look all the way up now so stretching along the front pointing your chin up high and you're gonna bring the ear to the shoulder so the same half circles like you did to the front we're just gonna do them to the back The same thing again, not overextending, keeping the shoulders down. And not having any discomfort, just feeling a nice stretch. Okay, so one more each side. Back to center and looking forward again. This time we're going to make some circles with the shoulders, just small circles. If you're anything like me, you might feel some crunching in the shoulders, which is probably common amongst swimmers. So just slowly work through it. Don't cause yourself pain. Okay, and we're going to change direction, going to the front. Okay, and just bringing the hands up reaching them all the way out so try and get a nice big stretch really pull the shoulder blades in together really really let go on the fingers 
try and release that stretch. Okay, and some small circles with the hands. If you are looking at yourself on a screen, it's a good opportunity to see if your shoulders are balanced, if one sits higher than the other. Um, so that's the type of thing that you can just take note of and be aware of. And then you can work on correcting it whenever you're doing something like this. For example, if you're aware that your left hand goes a little bit lower, then you know to pull it up a bit higher. Okay, change in direction. And bringing the hands all the way up over your head, reaching all the way up, coming into your streamline. So just reaching up for now, you can release the hands and streamline with the opposite hand in front. Biceps nice and close to the ears and release the hands, reaching all the way up bringing the right hand down to the ground and reaching all the way over. Feeling that stretch all along the side, down along your lap muscle, which is that V-shaped muscle underneath your arm and even down into your side, into your abdominals. And coming back up, another streamline conscious all the time of the breath. Don't let the shoulders bunch up. Swapping sides on the streamline. And releasing the hands. Reaching all the way up and coming over to that side. Okay, so reminding yourself of the breaths that we did at the start and bringing that breath back in now. Feeling the stretch all along the side. And coming back up to centre. One final stretch and quickly change. And bring the shoulders down, give them a small roll. And now we'll bring one arm across. So it's like a, a cross with your hands. So there's one arm straight and it's straight across your body and the opposite from the elbow up is straight up. Okay, and to intensify that stretch, just look over the shoulder of the straight arm. Nice big breaths. Okay, always reminding yourself of the breathing pattern you used at the start. Okay, and you can slowly slide that hand out. So the bent arm is gonna slide along the straight one now. Nice and slowly and relax. You can shake them out a bit. And now the opposite side. So straight arm directly across and the other arm is, the elbow is bent, pointing straight up from the ground. If you want to intensify the stretch in the shoulder, look over the shoulder of the straight arm. But if you're happy without looking over the shoulder, stay in that position. So it's all about knowing what your body wants. And slowly sliding that arm along. And relax, shaking out the arms. Okay, so some circles with the elbows now.
and change direction. Okay, and now circles with the wrists. And change direction. Okay, so you're going to just bring the hand straight out in front, the fingers pointing up, and you're going to bring the heel of the other hand over the tops of the fingers, and you're just going to stretch. So you're keeping that straight arm, and that's a stretch underneath the forearm here that you should feel. Okay, remembering the breaths every time. Your nice inhale for it, whether it was the count of four, five, six, whatever you used. Exhale is the same. Okay, and releasing the hands. And now you're just going to point the fingers down the way. And the same thing, the heel of the hand comes over. And now you'll feel this stretching the top of the forearm. These are the types of stretches you could do against a wall as well. So it's just about positioning your fingers up or down and you're just leaning your body weight against the wall. Okay, and relax, shaking out the arms. Okay, so the opposite arm, so the fingers are pointing up, the heel of the hand comes over and you're stretching that forearm. Okay, so the smaller muscles of the body and the lesser considered joints can often be forgotten about. But that can often be where some of the niggly injuries come from. If you're here last week, okay, we're just going to change sides. So pointing the fingers down. <coughs> So I mentioned last week that the forearms are actually quite important in your front crawl stroke, but we often focus on our shoulders and try and improve the mobility on the shoulders. When really, if we could build up the forearms, it might uh, assist a little bit better and just get better movement patterns, even in the wrist as well. Okay, we can shake them out. Right, so we're going to move over onto our all fours position. <clears throat> okay, so from this position, you can also do the same exercises that we just did, and you can adjust where you have your knees. So if your knees are further back, that's going to cause um, a little bit more pressure. If your knees are further forward, that's got less pressure because it's less of your body weight on it. Um, so to do them on this position, your hands are out flat and you're leaning your body forward. That's with the hands up. And the other one is to have the hands down and you're actually leaning back. Okay. So what we're going to do, just moving on from those, is keep the hands in a normal position. So you're going to have the hands open, the middle finger is pointing forward, and you focus your weight onto this soft part here between your uh, first finger and your thumb. But really what you want is like a balance of the weight over all the fingers, but by focusing it there, it helps you to do that. So you can start with a fairly neutral position. So just having the hips over the knees, you're not going to be too putting too much weight on one way or the other, but you're going to have a little bit of pressure on. The hands are directly underneath the shoulders and we're just going to do some circles. So circles, just like we would do with our shoulders, we're doing them now with our wrists, but you've got the added bit of weight from your upper body leaning on them. Okay, 
and the other direction. So while you're at home now and not able to use the gym or not able to go to the pool, not able to swim in the sea until tomorrow, um, you might have started doing push-ups and exercises like that. So if you are doing any push-ups and things like that, you'll find any of these wrist exercises will be really good for, um, for that. Okay, so you can come back to center again. Um, okay, from here we're just going to do some cash cow, so we're moving down into the spine. So again, I'll just draw you back to the breaths that we did at the start. So as you look up, you're going to inhale and the back is going to arch. So you have a nice big space for your lungs to expand and fill up on your inhale. And on your exhale you are going to arch the back up and you're going to bring the chin into your chest that's on your exhale and inhale opening up the area for the lungs again looking all the way up dropping the back down and curling back in for your exhale. Okay, so three more in your own breath time. And exhale, just being conscious of the movement of your vertebrae. Keeping the weight evenly over your knees and your hands. So it's a nice and slow pace along with your breath. And you don't want to overextend at any time. And last one, inhale. And exhale. Okay, so just coming back to center. Okay, so what you're going to do from here is keep in a nice tabletop position so your back is flat. The hands are positioned underneath the shoulders, so everything is in a line. And the same with the knee and the hip, nicely in a line. So with one arm, you're going to bring the hand all the way up. And then you're going to thread it through underneath. You're going to come down onto your shoulder. Rest your head on the mat. We're going to do two breaths here. big inhale and on the exhale you're going to lift that top arm back pointing the fingers all the way up keeping the head down on the mat we're going to stay here for another three breaths And slowly bringing that hand back down resting it on the ground and pushing yourself back into your tabletop position okay so you can take a minute there just to get your breath reposition making sure that you are having a flat back that the shoulders elbows and wrists are all in line and that the hips are nicely over the knees you haven't gone off balance Okay, and we'll do the opposite side. So reaching the arm up and 
and threading it through, coming down onto the shoulder, resting the head on the mat. Resting the head on the mat, yeah. And two breaths here. And a big inhale and exhale, reaching that hand up. And you can actually look up along that arm feeling the twist. So three breaths here. And bringing the hand back down onto the mat and using it to push you back up into your all fours. Okay, so from here you're gonna bring the toes together, bring the knees out wide, and you're gonna sit back into a child's pose. You're gonna really reach the arms out in front, really, really stretching them out, and bringing the forehead to the mat, Keeping the bum down as low as you can, as close to the heels as possible. If you have difficulty keeping the bum down when you're in child's pose, you can always, if you have something to put on your lower back, you can try and push yourself down with um, something not too heavy, but enough to give you that sensation of being pushed down. Okay, so we'll have three breaths here. Okay, and slowly bringing, keeping the hands exactly where they were on the mat, you can slowly bring your weight back over those hands, open up the feet. So bringing the toes to either side at the back and you're gonna lift your hips up into the air. You're coming into a downward dog. So all you're doing here is just stretching, getting a nice stretch all the way from the tailbone to the fingers and all the way along the backs of the legs. You can try and open up the shoulders as much as you can. Armpits are facing down. Thinking about the weight on your hands, the same way you would have had it displaced when you're in your tabletop position. Okay, and you're just gonna lift up the left leg, point the toes up to the sky and bend that knee underneath the chest. You're gonna step it forward into a lunge. So it's a normal lunge just in between your hands. You can bring the back knee to the ground, pointing the toes back. And you can roll the back. So you've started down here, just rolling yourself back up pressing the shoulder blades down, pointing the fingers down towards the ground. And as you're doing that, you can push your hips forward. So if you need to, you can bring your hands up onto your hips, actually push the hips forward and keeping them side by side. So once you're happy that you've gone as far as you can in that position, you can bring the hands back down and really try and point the tips of the fingers off the ground. Three breaths here. Okay, and on the next exhale, you can just fold yourself back over the top of the leg, bring the hands down, curl the toes underneath, hover the knee and you can step back into your downward dog. 
Okay, if you need to move the knees and kind of do your stepping to loosen up the hips, do that. Or if you're happy just to really drive the tailbone into the sky, you can also do that. So it's whatever is comfortable for you. Okay, and bringing the right leg up to the sky, pointing the toe up, bending the knee underneath the chest, and stepping it through the hands. Bring the knee down to the ground, point the toes back, and roll yourself back, push the shoulder blades down, adjust your hips if you need to, so making sure that they stay side by side and you can push the hips forward. For me, I always feel it on the hip flexor of the back leg, um, but it depends on your mobility and how tight the hips are. You might feel it in both hips, so you might feel it underneath in your hamstring connector of the front leg. But it's all about going to your limit, getting your spot that you're comfortable in and making your own progressions that's the beauty of doing this in your own house you don't have to look side by side and see what anyone else is doing your focus is purely on yourself okay so pointing the toes or sorry the fingers to the ground okay for me i really like this stretch because when I'm kicking a lot in cold water, I find that these hip flexors can lock up on me. So this is one that I need to do regularly. Okay, and rolling yourself back over. The hands come down to the mat. Hover the knee, curl the toe underneath. Stepping back into your downward dog. You can walk the knees if you need to do that, just to loosen it all out. Or you can bring the tailbone all the way up to the sky. Squeeze the quads to release the hamstrings. Bring the heels down as close to the mat as you can. And you can get your block or your pull boy or your cushion, whatever you have. Get that close to hand because we're going to go into the pigeon pose. And if you do have tight hips, it's nice to have something to support underneath the hip. Okay, so we're going to start off left leg up in the air. You're going to bring that through to your chest and you might need to assist yourself. So stepping across and you're going to try as best as you can to get that into a right angle. So once you're happy with your right angle, then you position your pull boy or whatever it is underneath the hip. If you're like me, the hip is raised. Some people will get their hip right down to the ground and that's great. Um, what I had, did say last week when we talked about this, the right angle, the reason for that is to protect your knee. Your knee is designed as a hinge. It's not a ball and socket joint. Your hip is a ball and socket joint. So it's designed to move the way that it does, whereas your knee should only be going front and back. It shouldn't go side to side. Um, so that's the reason for the 90 degree angle. Some people will still need to cheat a bit and bring that back into like a 45 degree angle. And that's fine just once you're aware that you're not putting too much pressure on the knee because it's not really designed into that position. Okay, so bringing yourself down onto your forearms. We'll take three breaths here. So we've already had about two while I was talking. And you can go as flat to the mat here as your body allows.
Okay, so some people will be able to walk the hands all the way out in front and bring the forehead to the mat, but if you have quite a bit of support underneath that hip, it might be difficult to do that. Once you are feeling the stretch and the tension in the outside of the hip, so the bit that's actually connecting with the support, um, and once you're comfortable with the feeling that you have, then that's all you need to do. You don't need to push it any further. Okay, so you're going to walk the hands back up, getting them into position. Curl the toes underneath, hover the knee at the back. And you're going to step back into the downward dog position. And you can move your block or your pull boy over to the other side so that it's ready to be put into position for the opposite side. Okay, so lifting the opposite leg up and bending the knee underneath and then giving yourself a helping hand to get into position and you're going to bring that hip down i do find a pull boy is really comfortable for this it's actually better than a block because it has that dip in the middle so it's like it's perfectly designed well it is perfectly designed to go in between your legs but it wasn't designed to go underneath you as a support in a pigeon pose but there we go we improvise okay so bringing the forearms down to the mat as much as you can okay so just being conscious that you're not rolling your back around you're still trying to keep a nice flat back here the focus is that you would bring your belly down towards the upper leg. Like the focus is not on getting your upper body lower to the ground. It's about getting a nice fold on the hip. Okay, so two more breaths here. So again, every exhale, you're just going to sink a little bit more into it. And just embrace that stretch and that feeling of tension. bringing the hands underneath again, curling up the toes, hover the knee and you're coming back into that downward dog position. Okay, you can move your support to the side, you can come down onto your knees. Okay, and you can bring the legs through. So we're going to do the exact same type of stretch but we're going to do it in the lying position. So the legs stay up, it's your figure four where we'll go with the opposite leg. So you're bending the opposite leg to the one that was out in front last. Just so you're not overstretching the one. So whatever leg you had out in front bent last, you're going to have the opposite one now folding across the straight leg. Loop the hands through the straight leg nice big inhale and on your exhale pulling that leg in nice and close to the body you might find you need to reposition here because your ankle might need to move it might be too close to the bone of the knee so you try and always get it on the fleshy part of your quad so you get on a fleshy part of the upper leg you don't want to have bone on bone because that will be uncomfortable Another nice big inhale and on your exhale, push that knee out and pull the leg in a little bit more. And on your next exhale, you're just going to release, cycle the legs. Bringing the two legs up again and the opposite leg is going to cross over. Looping the two hands through. Okay, so we'll do two breaths like this where you're just pulling the leg into the body. You're not doing anything with the bent knee just yet. So 
So just two breaths like this. And now on your next exhale, you're gonna push out that knee as you pull in the straight leg. It'll just deepen the stretch a little bit. And cycle the legs okay and from where we are we're just going to straighten the legs pointing the toes all the way up to the sky if you need to support your legs um, in this position if you don't or some people might have their legs here where they're not able to get them straight up from their hips if your legs are there then I would suggest that you put your hands underneath just to support yourself but otherwise if your legs will go straight up in the air that's perfect so point the toes and now bring the toes back down towards the chest and point with your heels so driving the heels up and point the toes so we're going to do this ten times toes heels toes heels Toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes. Heels three more times, point the toes and drive up with the heels, point the toes, pressing up with the heels, point the toes and pressing up with the heels. You can cycle the feet. Now, if you were very comfortable with the legs being up like that, and you're able to grab your toes do that if not you might need to get a strap or a towel or something just to pull those toes down towards you so whatever suits okay so it's really easy if you can grab your feet to do both feet at the same time you might feel going with the strap that it's actually better to go one leg at a time so whatever suits if you are just holding your toes you can grab both toes together and really press with the heels and if you're going with a strap you can do one leg at a time so really pressing with the heel so this you should really feel this into your calf and it has the potential to be quite intense and drive really sharply into your knee so if you are finding any discomfort just ease off shake out the leg and then try it again just if there's discomfort because you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to find yourself injured when we're all allowed to go back swimming tomorrow Okay, and shaking out the legs. So if you were doing both hands or both legs together, you can just shake them out and cycle the legs. If you're doing one leg at a time, you can swap sides now. And really press up with that heel. Okay, so if you did the two together, you can do a few points and flexes. So pointing the toes and pointing with the heels. Just while we're finishing off this other side. Okay, so three more breaths here. And remember not to overdo it.
okay and releasing the strap, bringing the leg down. You can do your uh, cycling with the legs. And we'll sit up. Okay, so the last one. Um, I think we've done this one now nearly every week. So the toes are going to point back. The top of the foot is flat with the mat. And you are going to bring your weight back onto your toes. So your weight is on here. The knees are up. Um, I always need to support myself at the back. If you find that that's not enough for you, then you can bring the hands up and you can just stay in this position. We're gonna hold it for a minute. Okay, so if it's really, really high intensity for you, I'm gonna tell you when we've hit 30 seconds, I'd ask you just do another 10 seconds after that. If you're able to get comfortable with it, I'd ask you to continue on for the minute. Okay, so that's our 30 seconds. So I'd ask everyone just really focus for the last 10 seconds if you are new to this. Okay, so that's 40 seconds. So if you're new to this stretch, you can drop out now. Everybody else, I would ask you to stay. We have a further 10 seconds. Okay, so really just focus on the breath when it gets difficult, the last five. Okay, and slowly bringing the hands down, rocking yourself out of it. You want to come back into your cat cow position and you're just going to do some circles with the ankles because you'll probably need it after that. And you can walk them up and down, whatever you need, just to relax. Okay, so that is the end of today's stretch and I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me.